In this section, we'll talk about the next design pattern called as withdrawal pattern. So to explain this, let me open a new solidity file, call it withdrawal.sol. I'm coding all the design patterns so that uh, you get a real life understanding of these, right? So most of the time it is just taught in theory, but not shown, right? How it works. So I feel this is a better way to go through, uh, even though it takes time, right? It's always better to learn things in a practical manner right so that's why i wanted to code all of these design patterns and show you what is the problem how can that be solved etc okay so let me create a contract called withdraw right or let's call it you know the richest okay why am i calling it the richest what are we going to do in this contract is just that uh, the example given in solidity read the docs itself okay uh, solidity withdrawal pattern let's say okay so here if you go to Mm, the latest version right this is not the latest but let me change it once i go here right let's say this and withdrawal from contracts here they would have uh, spoken about a withdrawal contract where uh, you are you are just calculating the richest and most sent person okay so it's a very simple contract where you know you will say address payable richest i'll explain what this is okay and then you will also say you went uh, most sent i'm using the same contract that is there instead of copy pasting it it's better if i write it so it's uh, easier for you to understand as well so have a constructor okay and make it payable so what we are going to do is every time a person calls a function or sends money to this contract right i wanna uh, note if he is the richest person right that's all if i am sending one ether first and then you are sending two ether you will become the richest according to this contract then if someone else is coming sending more than you he will become the richest right so that way i want to um, track who is sending the most money to my contract okay so constructor payable says richest is equal to the message dot sender correct and most sent is equal to the message dot value okay so this is how i'm doing it and of course this has to be public right so i'll capture the message dot sender and most sent why am i doing this directly is because whenever a uh, constructor is called i'm the first person who is going to send money right so i'll become the richest then write a function which says uh, invest okay so let this be payable also and public right so within this what i'm doing is if someone wants to send more money right it should be more than most sent okay i have sent one ether you cannot send 0.5 ether now because that is no use for me riches is not going to change right so i'm going to, first gonna think okay require that the message dot value that you are sending is greater than most sent okay so not enough money to become richest this is a very nice contract you know anyway so if this require statement is working out then what am i doing is i'm saying um richest is equal to message dot sender okay and most sent obviously is equal to message dot value right i'm taking this up that's not an issue till now everything is working fine right but whoever sends that money right i don't want to hold it inside the contract okay i just want to see who is the richest and send it back to them itself okay so what i'm doing is here richest dot transfer okay the message dot value i'm not holding the money i'm just making sure they are sending it to the contract so i know that they are the richest in the world okay here also i'm trying to do the same thing richest dot transfer right message dot value you understand why i'm doing this right i don't want to store their money in my contract i just want to make sure they are the richest by sending money and getting it back immediately okay this way so richest dot transfer message dot value and this is where the problem comes okay so what happens here is that 
whenever you do this uh, request dot transfer of message dot value right immediately it is going if it is going to a contract let's say okay let's say contract b and this contract has invested into this function okay invest some money uh, it has sent 10 ether that is becoming the richest also what will happen if uh, you transfer money to a contract it directly right it is going to call the fallback function yeah this transfer is not meant to uh, transfer money to a contract right it is meant to transfer money to a externally owned account yeah if it is going to a contract without a fallback function in contract b then what's going to happen or if it has a fallback function right if it has a fallback function also and it is payable let's say or oh, fallback function should be external within this he is immediately calling revert what will happen to this it will transfer and it will fail if the transfer fails then this entire function will fail it will not work which means you will be holding the money inside your contract itself that's not intended right so for this what our uh, solidity design pattern suggests is that have a mapping don't do this reversal right so don't transfer don't transfer within the function itself okay so transfer later it says right now what can i do okay if i want to transfer later i want to make sure how much he has transferred and everything correct so that's why i need to do mapping of address to event okay public investors right so as soon as this person sends it i wanna you know uh, add him to investors investors dot push of message dot sender right oh sorry this is not investors dot push it's a mapping so investors of message dot sender is equal to message dot value we'll just keep it in a mapping then we will do function withdraw okay withdraw this will be public and this if someone calls right what we are going to do is we are going to take the event amount so this if you remember is uh, from re-entrancy attack right so we'll see that in detail however uh, you you should be able to understand this what is being happening right so you'll say investors okay investors of message dot sender whoever is calling this withdraw right so you want to transfer his own money to himself okay so you will say investors message dot sender then you will do investors of message dot sender equal to zero first then transfer the third person message dot sender right message dot sender dot transfer dot transfer right amount correct amount is a local variable created just for this purpose so what happens here opposed to this okay opposed to this is that whenever uh, this richest uh, dot transfer is failing right previously because of the fallback function revert without a fallback function or anything then this richest dot transfer is failing if this fails which means even if one of the uh, lines fail in a particular contract right uh, function the entire function will revert back to its original state so richest will not be message dot sender most sent will not be message dot value so he has sent money right the going by the logic we are going to send it back right but that did not work because this might fail right but in this case when you separate the responsibilities of each of the function this is just going to record the information and this is going to withdraw right so uh, if the person withdraws and it is a problem right it uh, this transfer fails also no issues the richest is uh, already noted down and message dot sender is already noted down right so this is the problem with the caller we cannot do anything about it he has to write a fun contract with fallback function without a revert and all of these things yeah so that is how withdrawal pattern works in solidity 
right you can also go through this uh, uh, withdrawal pattern that's there in solidity read the docs itself if you want to understand more about this right wonderful so with this we come to the end of withdrawal pattern we'll see in the next video